Welcome to Sunday morning meditations put on by the St. Margaret of Antioch Anglican Church in Belmont and supported by the St. Jerome Mission in Gonzales. I am Canon Ronald Branch, priest in charge of the parish, welcoming you on this Palm Sunday morning. Let us pray. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the rest of the past night and for the gift of a new day with its opportunities of pleasing you. Grant that we may so pass its hours in the perfect freedom of your service, that at evening we may again give you thanks, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Call it for Palm Sunday. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our scripture reading for this morning is from Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 to 9. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakes me. Wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheek to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spit it. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will command content with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them come for, confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare my, me guilty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 31, verses 9 to 16. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all enemies and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me, I am forgotten like a dead man out of mine. I am as useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hands. Rescue me from the hand of the enemies. 
and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servants, and in your loving kindness save me. A reading from the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 5 to 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who thought he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that as the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you and also with you. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark chapter 11 beginning at verse 1 and reading through verse 10. Glory to Christ our Savior. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the, on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. The gospel of Christ, praise to Christ our Lord. Today is Palm Sunday, a significant day in Christianity or on the Christian calendar when we remember Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Last week, Sunday, he left us with these words, speaking to his disciples who were about to introduce him to some Greeks and Gentiles, he said, my hour has come. And time had come for him to glorify God. And indeed, on this Sunday, we remember what took place just before he entered into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. He raised Lazarus from the dead. And this was noised abroad. So on this day when they celebrated the Passover, that is their liberation day from the clutches of Egypt, On this day, he chose to ride on a donkey into the city. You can well imagine the noise and the clamor. Everyone rushing to see the Messiah. And people shouting, Hosanna. Making noises of joy. Luke tells us that at one point in this procession, Jesus had begun to cry. Simply because while the people were there, 
clamoring and wanting to feel that from here on, this Messiah was going to take power from Rome and establish an earthly kingdom, Jesus knew what was ahead of him. He knew that he was going to face the cross. He had told his disciples over and over of his impending doom. He said, they will destroy this temple and I will rebuild it in three days. Every time he spoke about his death, he spoke about his resurrection and ascension. Yet they did not take this in its true sense. So that when the time came for this hour, when he could say that his hour had finally come, Many in the crowd had no knowledge of what Jesus was about. But we can satisfy ourselves with the symbolism of his riding on a donkey. A donkey for the Jews was a burden bearer. It acted as transport in those days and carried loads. Jesus chose to come on a donkey and not a horse. Had he come on a horse, he'd be looking for war. But he comes on a donkey because he's about peace. He's the prince of peace. And so he comes riding amid the noise and the chatter of those who were still remembering all the miracles that he had done. And the latest of them, raising Lazarus from the dead made him even more popular. And thus, tears came to his eyes because here are people jumping up to the Hosannas, not even knowing that he was on his way to his death. It is important for us to understand this. For Jesus became obedient to death. In a real sense, he emptied himself of his power, his divine power. For with his divine power, he could stand against the opposition, the people who opposed him. And the people who were on the fringe there, looking to get rid of him. In the heat of the excitement, Jesus looks down and he sees this massive crowd following him and shouting, Hosanna. But he knows what is ahead of him. Isn't it significant? Through the eyes of Isaiah, who creates the suffering servant pointing to Jesus in chapters 50 through 53, Isaiah talks about the burden bearer pointing to Jesus that was to come. Isn't it significant 
that that burden bearer is now carried on a beast of burden, the donkey, isn't it significant that that beast of burden is carrying the burden bearer of our sins? Isn't there a theology in that connecting this animal and is carrying him while he's carrying our sins? Have you thought of it? Do you understand it? What does that portend for us? For indeed, sinless though he was, he died on the cross for our sins. And he chose this way of entry into Jerusalem. In the peak of the Passover time, he symbolizes that he had come to establish peace. But many missed why he came. They were still thinking of how he would use his power, how he would use his authority. Well, that is what, how we think. Thinking always of dominance and power and authority. And Jesus symbolizes for us peace and love. And that's why he came. He came to save those who were lost. Who were lost in the thinking of dominance and power. He came to save all those whose minds were trained in a certain direction that he would become in charge and rule. And Jesus was the Prince of Peace. And therefore, he chose the donkey and not a horse. And he rode into Jerusalem on the burden bearer, the donkey, who was bearing the burden bearer, Jesus, was bearing our sins to carry to the cross. I pray that as you reflect on this, on this Palm Sunday, it will make a difference in your life, in understanding why we owe so much to Jesus for our lives on earth at this time. We may not know, we cannot tell what pains he had to bear, but we believe it was for us he hung and suffered there. Amen.
was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. At this time, the Jewish people were celebrating a festival called Passover that had been celebrated since the time of Moses, when God brought his people out of Egypt. So Jesus was going to Jerusalem to celebrate. Jesus and his disciples stopped in the town. You're coming? And Jesus told two of his disciples to go on ahead of them. Eh, okay. He told them to go into a village and that they would see a young donkey that no one had ever ridden. Rock! He told them to untie it and bring it to him. If anyone asks, what are you doing? He told them to just say, the Lord needs it and will return it soon. Okay, go ahead. So the disciples did what Jesus said and brought him the donkey. A long time ago, before Jesus was even born, God had said that the Savior, the King of Israel, would come to Israel in this way. And now Jesus was doing just as God had said. The news that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem swept through the city. Many heard about all the amazing things he had done, so they cut palm branches and ran to see him. Huh? The Pharisees and religious rulers realized that there was nothing they could do, for everyone was going to see Jesus. Jesus rode into the city of Jerusalem and the crowd spread their coats on the road ahead of him. His followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. The Pharisees were upset. Hey, Jesus! And they told Jesus to stop the people from saying things like that. But Jesus said, if they keep quiet, the stones along the road would burst into cheers. So the people kept on singing, blessings on the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in highest heaven. The entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he entered, asking, who is this? And the crowds replied, it's Jesus. And Jesus rode the donkey through the street of Jerusalem to the temple in a triumphal entry just as God said he would many years before. Jewish leaders and teachers did not like what Jesus was doing or how he claimed to be the son of God. And so they made a plan to arrest him to get rid of him once and for all. Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, agreed to betray Jesus. Come in, come in. And give him over to the religious leaders for some money. The disciples asked Jesus where he wanted to eat the Passover meal that night. Jesus said, as you go into the city, a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you. Hello. Follow him. At the house he enters, say to the owner, uh, hi. The teacher asks, where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will take you upstairs to a large room that is already set up. That is where you should prepare our meal. The disciples found everything to be just as Jesus had said. 
Later that evening, Jesus arrived with the 12 disciples. They sat down to eat, and Jesus said that he was happy to be with everyone. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. He said, Take it, for this is my body, which is given for you. Jesus told them to do this to help remember him. Then he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. And he said to his disciples, This is my blood. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Jesus said, One of you eating with me here will betray me. He told them that things were supposed to happen this way, but that great sadness would await the one who betrays him. The disciples were very upset and asked, Am I the one? Who is he talking about? Judas asked Jesus, Am I the one? And Jesus said, You have said it. One of the disciples asked Jesus, Lord, who is it? Jesus said it was the one who he would give the bread to. He gave the bread to Judas, and Jesus said, Hurry and do what you're going to do. None of the others at the table knew what Jesus meant, so Judas left at once to betray Jesus. During this meal, Jesus told his followers that the time had come for him to leave them. Huh? Peter asked, Where are you going? Jesus told him Peter couldn't follow him now. What? But that he would follow him later. What is okay? But Peter said, Why can't I come now? I'm ready to die for you. Jesus said, Die for me, Peter. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even knew me. Then Jesus and his disciples went to the Mount of Olives so Jesus could pray. Along the way, Jesus told his followers that they would all abandon him. Uh-oh. But Peter said, Even if everyone else leaves you, I never will. Jesus said, Peter, this very night, before the rooster crows, you will deny three times that you even know me. But Peter wouldn't believe it and vowed that he would stay with Jesus until the very end. The other disciples vowed the same. Yeah, I hear. Jesus was in a garden praying and Judas showed the man who Jesus was. Jesus was arrested. Peter tried to fight for Jesus. Oh, no and he cut off the ear of one of the guards. Ow. But Jesus healed the guard huh? and went quietly with the captors. All the disciples scattered just as Jesus told them they would. The men led Jesus away to the house of the high priest. Peter and another disciple followed them. Peter came to warm himself by their fire. Uh, hello. <clears throat> A servant girl noticed him in the firelight. Uh -huh. Finally, she said, This man was one of Jesus' followers. Oh, my. But Peter denied it for the first time. He said, I don't even know him. Uh. <sighs> After a while, someone else looked at him and said, You must be one of them. Oh. Peter for a second time said, No, I'm not. Uh, okay. <sighs> About an hour later, a man who knew the man whose ear Peter cut off said, Didn't I see you in the olive grove with Jesus? This must be one of them. He comes from the same place as all of them. Yeah, you're right. But Peter said, No, no, no. I don't know what you're talking about. And then Peter heard the crow of the rooster. <laughs> Jesus turned and looked at Peter. Jesus' words flashed through his mind, and Peter left the courtyard weeping. Jesus was presented before the high council, and they asked him if he was the Messiah, the Savior of the Jews. They asked him if he was claiming to be the Son of God. You say that I am. And the council was furious, and they shouted that Jesus was guilty, and he deserves to die. So they took Jesus before the Roman ruler Pilate, 
and he heard the case against Jesus. Pilate didn't think that Jesus had done anything wrong. Huh, seems okay to me. They found him to be innocent, so Pilate said that he would punish Jesus and then release him. Ah! 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 Huh, what? But the crowd kept screaming louder and louder, crucify him, we want him dead. And because of the pressure of the crowd, Pilate turned Jesus over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. Jesus was hurt and spit on, his clothes were torn and taken from him, and a crown made out of thorns was put on his head. He was beaten so badly that he could barely stand on his own, and then he was forced to carry his cross so far up a mountain that he needed help because he could not do it on his own. Once Jesus made it to the place where he would be crucified, called the skull, the soldiers around him nailed him to the cross and waited for him to die. While Jesus was hanging on the cross, many people shouted to him, If you really are the Son of God, save yourself from the cross. But Jesus knew he had to die to forgive his people for their sins. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land. Three hours later, Jesus took his last breath and finally died. At that very moment, the curtain in the temple that separated the priests from God's holy place tore in two. A soldier watching the whole thing said, This man truly was the Son of God. Then a righteous man named Joseph came and placed Jesus' body in a tomb. Three days passed and it seemed that there was no hope. Hey y'all, it's Lacey, the Catholic Icing Lady, and today I'm going to show you how to fold a super easy palm cross, the kind that has the X on the front. And at the end of this video, I'm going to show you a tip that keeps your crosses looking like this and keeps them from ending up looking like this when they dry out, okay? So let's get started. So here's my palm. These are super long. This is the kind you just get at mass, and you're only gonna be able to see part of it while I work with it. So I'm gonna pull off this dry edge here. You can get off whatever edge or strings that you want, and you can make your palm whatever width you want to start with. So I'm gonna make mine a little skinnier. Now you're going to make your first fold and you're going to make it about as tall as you want your cross to be. So I'm folding that over and the part that you see folded right now, that is how tall the cross will be. So I'm going to give that a pretty good crease at the top to hold it in place and I'm going to turn it over so that my long side is pointed up at me. Then I'm going to fold the palm to the right side, that really long side, and give it a 45 degree crease in the middle and then I'm gonna fold it back, and that is the first arm of my cross, so however long you make that is the arm of your cross. And then we wanna make it about the same length on the other side. I really like the arms of my cross to also be about the same as the top of the cross. So then I'm gonna crease that again there. Okay, so now we have our basic cross shape but we're gonna have to fold the palm up because we're making an X to hold it together. So another 45 degree angle, it's going up, then it goes underneath and I pull it around just like that. So now it's going over but straight and I give it another crease. Now it's gonna go under and up at the top there. Then it's gonna come back down. Okay, so what that did is, on the front of our cross, it created this really nice X that holds everything together. Now on the back, we have this part that went across. It created like a little pocket. And we're gonna take our palm, and we're gonna take the very end and feed it behind there, and pull it, and that holds the cross in place without needing any glue or anything like that. So then you wanna take that and put it behind everything again, and you can just keep looping and looping it through until it takes up the whole length of your palm. You can just keep on going. 
um, or you can snip it off but then you know be careful what you do with the part that you cut off because it is a blessed object okay there's your super easy palm cross that has the X in the front and here's another when you're finished with your cross you're gonna want to put it under like a super heavy book or something like that so that it dries flat it's the same concept as pressing a flower and the ones on the right side were just left to their own devices to just dry up so this one dried under a book here and you can see that it still curls a little bit at the edge but overwhelmingly it still makes a nice cross to display somewhere for the year um, these have been drying about the same amount of time and you can see the ones on the right are just completely a curled up mess so be sure to dry your palms flat and check out my other videos on what else you can do with your palms. Have a good Palm Sunday. Intercession Form B, page 107. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our needs and those of others. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, Help us to ask only what accords to your will and the good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We thank those who participated today. This is Joan Jerome. This is Andrea Sobers, Miss Alicia Barry, and Mr. Akil George Orpanis. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our parts, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us evermore. Amen. Please have a spirit-filled week. Just remember that we have services here on Monday evening at 5.30, Tuesday morning at 6.30 a.m., Wednesday evening 5.30, Thursday evening 5.30, and Friday morning a service at 8.00 on Friday lunchtime, there's a one-hour reflection on the cross from 12 to 1. Saturday evening, there will be service at 7, with two baptisms. And Sunday morning, Easter day, at 7.30 a.m. We thank you for watching this virtual service. And trust that we have reached you in a significant way for Holy Week. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.